In today's world, Android is almost synonymous with the word mobile operating system. It is one of the most used operating system of all time. And because of this, we often take Android for granted. It almost seems like this Android thing just came overnight. Behind the success of Android, there is a very interesting tale of innovation. In this video, I am going to look into the journey of Android. So, without wasting any more time, let's get started, shall we? Still as a breeze, a river flowing deep, don't wanna leave. Like most of the stories, the story of Android started with a guy with some great ideas. In this case, it was Andy Rubin. In 2003, a startup named as Android Inc. was founded by Andy Rubin, Rich Miner, Nick Sears, and Christopher White. But no matter how many times you want to say money doesn't matter, in the real world, I think it does. This guy, Steve Perlman, gave Rubin $10,000 to work on his project. Initially, Android wasn't even supposed to be a smartphone OS. It was supposed to be an operating system for digital camera. It really sounds crazy nowadays. Later on, the developers realized that digital camera market isn't that big. So they started to work on an OS that can compete against Nokia's Symbian OS and Microsoft's Pocket PC. In 2005, a relatively small company named as um, Google, I guess, acquired Android Inc. Google was very secretive about Android though. They treated it more like an experiment. The early prototypes of Android phones had a keyboard and had no touch support, like the BlackBerry devices. But life always doesn't follow a plan. In April 2007, Apple took the smartphone industry by storm with the introduction of their iPhone. And they changed everything. Android team wasn't prepared for this. They had to start all over again to implement the support for touchscreen in their OS. And it shows. In October 2002, Google partnered with HTC and T-Mobile to bring the first ever Android phone, HTC Dream or T-Mobile G1. The OS was not as smooth as iPhone OS. It was laggy and aesthetically less alluring. But the integration of Gmail and ability for endless customization made it something worth noticing. One of the most interesting things about Android is their dessert codename. Each version of Android is named after a dessert. Google's project manager Ryan Gibson was initially responsible for these names. Android 1.5 Cupcake was the first version of Android with a dessert code name. But you must be thinking why they do that. When Android KitKat released, Google gave us an official statement and here it is. Since these devices make our life so sweet, each Android version is named after a dessert. On 27 April 2009, Google released Android 1.5 Cupcake and just 41 days later released 1.6 Donut. It wasn't a big update, it mainly focused on stability and bug fixes. In October of the same year, Android received their first big overhaul, Android 2.0 Eclair. It brought Google Maps integration, a new UI and it made Android more mainstream. This version of Android was exclusive to Motorola Droid, one of the best phones of that time. 2.1 was a minor update, but it came with the first ever Nexus device. On 5th January 2010, Google unveiled their first smartphone, Nexus One. With 2.2 for you, Android gave us support for mobile hotspot, a redesigned home screen, and a gallery app that supports 3D. On December 2010, Android 2.3 Ginger were released. It was a minor upgrade, the most notable feature being support for front-facing camera. It debuted on Samsung's Nexus S. Android 3.0 Honeycomb is the odd one among the batch. It was made only for tablets. It had a different visual look. In October 2011, the biggest update on Android came in the form of 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich. The notification door was changed along with improved widget support and an action center for multitasking. It came first in Galaxy Nexus smartphone. With Android 4.0 Jelly Bean in 2012, Google tried to catch the tablet market. This update was mainly focused on performance. But the biggest feature with this version is the introduction of Google Now, 
an intelligent service which can predict what you want to see and when you want to see and also respond to your voice commands. In October 2013, Google partnered with Nestle to bring the first ever sponsored version of Android, Android 4.4 KitKat. This version brought Google now directly to the home screen and got rid of most of that hollow blue thing. Then in 2014, one of the biggest changes to Android came in the form of Android 5.1 Lollipop. Google adapted their beautiful material design with this version and also with their services. Multitasking was redefined, notification was smarter and Android started to get into TV, smartwatches and tablets. 2015 saw the release of Android Marshmallow. This version first came with Nexus 6P, Nexus 5S and Pixel tablet. Next year in 2016, Google released Android 7.0 Nougat. It brought native support for split-screen multitasking for the first time along with Google's first smart assistant, Google Assistant. This was the year when Nexus line was replaced with Google Pixel and Pixel XL. Currently the latest version of Android is Android Audio. This is the second time Google is using an already established name. This version came with the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL. So friends, this was the journey of Android so far. Android P is going to be the next version of Android. Let me know in the comment section if you have any idea about it. Thanks guys for watching this video, like and share this video if you really like it. And yeah, this is the most important part. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and press that bell icon to watch more videos like this and this. It's me, Tech Inspector, signing out and I will see you on every Thursday, every week. Think of you.